So I wondered about Scotland, because Scotland is a famous area for geology. Everywhere it seemed to have been mapped, except out to the west there were some islands called the Outer Hebrides. The structure I was mapping is parallel to what is possibly the most famous fault zone in the world, the Moyne Thrust, on the mainland of Scotland. And it dips the same way, and I still tend to think it's mostly about the same age. Uh, but the difference is that on the mainland, the Moyne Thrust involves uh, late Precambrian Paleozoic stratigraphy, Torridonian sandstone, Dennis limestone, uh, quartzites, and so on. So it was classic geological mapping on the mainland. In the Outer Hebrides, they're 99% Lewisian gneiss, and they don't have much in the way of marker units that you can ever trace more than 10 meters or maybe 100 meters or so. So I found that what you could do was map belts of different types of fault rock, which are the sort of products of faulting. And these belts of different types of fault rock, pseudotacolites were one, myelonites were another. You could map those out and they formed a pattern that was pretty systematic and it made you start wondering why one belt was full of pseudotacolite, and another one was cataclasite, and another one was uh, philonitic myelinites, that's very hydrated myelinites. The issue that I had encountered was, was that in the Outer Hebrides, these friction melts on fault pseudotacolites were very common. You could find them in almost every road outcrop west of the main thrust, just little squirts of the material. And I candidly thought I was going to spend the rest of my life going around the world finding pseudotacolites everywhere else. And it turned out not to be like that. They're very hard to find. In fact, parts of the Alpine fault zone in New Zealand, where I live now, uh, are quite rich in pseudotacolite, but still not as much as one would expect them to be, because earthquakes are actually a very common geologic process. I still puzzle about it. I wrote a little paper in 1973 suggesting one possible explanation that the rocks where the pseudotacolites occurred in the Outer Hebrides were dry crystalline gneisses without porphyry, though there was a little water, structural water in the micros and the amphiboles, etc. And that occurred to me that if you start dissipating energy and the fault has poor porosity and poor fluid, that as soon as you start dumping energy, the poor fluid will rise. And that will dramatically lower the uh, frictional resistance of the fault and reduce its further heat generating capacity. So that's come to be known as thermal pressurization. That most mature fault zones are hydrated and have uh, water and CO2, but predominantly water in their pore space. The other possibility that is hard to rule out is that fault zones are pretty ugly and they move repeatedly and fluids move around in there fractures crush existing material. And so a glass-like material can become altered beyond recognition very easily. And I still think about this. Is the apparent scarcity of pseudotacolites, is it a question of their survivability? These belts of different types of fault rock, pseudotacolites were one, myelinites were another, you could map those out and they formed a pattern that was pretty systematic. And I gradually evolved the idea that what I was seeing was parts of a continental fault zone from different crustal levels that had been brought together by the thrusting of the deeper stuff over the more shallow rock products of faulting. 
so that allowed me to develop a simple model of uh, the general structure of a continental fault zone in crystalline quartzofeldspathic crust. And uh, a lot of my work since then has been on expanding that model and seeing how it relates to uh, earthquake data. I have a seismologist friend who's a very good friend and he has said to me, Rick, if you tell us one more time that earthquakes occur in rocks and not elastic half spaces, you'll die a horrible death. Uh, <laughs> but this is something I've been pushing that, you know, rocks are the habitat of earthquakes, ruptures, and uh, perhaps the rocks in and around fault zones can tell you something about earthquake activity.